Good morning, church. Welcome to worship on this St. Patrick's Day. And warm welcome to all who are worshiping online. So uh, St. Patrick's Day, our Irish or wannabe Irish folks have put on a beautiful spread in the hall for after church. So you, you really have to go for coffee and refreshments because they have outdone themselves and it looks beautiful. So I want to share with you the irony of St. Patrick. Patrick, the patron saint of Ireland, was not Irish. He was born in Britain, most likely in England or Wales around the 4th century AD, and he had a different name. I'm not going to try it because I'll butcher it. At 16, he was captured by Irish pirates and taken to Ireland as a slave, where he worked as a shepherd for six years and found Christ. He escaped, returned to Britain, and studied to be a priest, and that's when he took on the name Patrick. And then he returned to Ireland as a missionary. So on this St. Patrick's Day, remember that the man who we name this day after wasn't quite Irish. <laughs> but his spirit was. And so the good news for all of us is that we too can be a little bit Irish on this day and you are warmly invited to let out your Irish side as you go for refreshments after the service. Folks, it was four years ago that this sanctuary was vacant for the first time. Sunday, March the 15th, 2020, was a day when there was myself, Bruce Cross, who was our music director at the time, and Stuart in the sanctuary on Sunday morning and we did a Facebook Live service for the first time. We had session on the Saturday, had canceled service because the COVID pandemic was beginning and we didn't feel it was safe to gather. Gosh, the things we've been through in four years, the things that we've learned and how good it is that we are able to be back together and to be able to worship in the sanctuary. So we give God thanks for that and lots to reflect on of what we've had in the last four years for sure. Holy Week is coming up quickly. Next Sunday, we begin our Holy Week journey with our Palm Sunday service on Sunday. Then we have a Good Friday service on the uh, Friday. And then on Easter morning, we have two services. There will be a sunrise service down on the beach, 7 a.m. We will be there, snow, whatever it happens to be. You never know at the end of March, right, what it could be. But we will be there on the beach, Richards Memorial Park. And uh, Pastor Jamie Bay from Clarkson Community Church and I will be leading the service part. Stuart's going to lead the music, and uh, it's always a beautiful morning. It's worth getting up early and just bundle up, and you'll be fine. And with any luck, we'll be able to see that sun rise over Lake Ontario. You probably saw in my email, we have a special event coming up on Saturday, April the 27th, a high tea. There'll be more coming out about that um, this week, but for now, please get it in your calendars. So let's take a deep breath and center ourselves as we come to worship our amazing God. We're going to do our introit, Colin. Oh, I'm sorry. You know what? You are on and I am off. Wow. 
Not a very good start to the morning, is it, folks? Let's hope it gets better. Praise God. Amen. God is good. And all the time, God is good. And wow. wow, awesome, sorry about that. Join in the responsive call to worship. Why are you here? I see it. You are in the right place. This is God's house. The door is open to you. I am seeking God with my whole heart and with my entire mind. Let us worship God. Let's join our voices together and sing at number 352, And Can It Be That I Should Gain?
Oh man, I love that hymn, but that was a marathon. Y'all did great. <laughs> Let's come before the Lord in prayer. Creating God, loving Christ, guiding spirit, with the promise of spring and new life awakening, you wake us from our slumbers. You are faithful to us through every season of the year and every season of life. The hope you offer in Jesus Christ draws us together as your spirit rises within our hearts. Even as the cross looms on the horizon, we praise you for Jesus' courage and compassion, which brings renewal to us in the midst of our challenges. We praise you, O oh God, for such love that will never let us go. As we praise you, we join our voices together and pray our prayer of confession. Holy God, we long to be lifelong learners. We long to approach you with curiosity and an open mind. Instead, we often live as if we know best. We forget that the disciples called you rabbi, teacher. Forgive us for the times when we fail to be curious. Forgive us for the times when we assume we know best. Forgive us for our moments when we imagine that our learning is done and that we have all the answers. Make us brave like Peter, who had the courage to ask, how many times should we forgive? Let our curiosity take us deeper in our faith. With hope and humility, we pray. Amen. When Peter asked Jesus, how many times should I forgive? Jesus responded with abundance. That abundance exists for each of us as well. No matter what you've done or left undone, no matter what lessons you have learned or are still learning, God's abundant grace exists for each and every one of you. God's love will never run out. So hear and rest in the good news. You are forgiven. You are loved. You are invited to serve. Thanks be to God. Amen. Hi guys, do you want to come up? We'll spend a couple of minutes together and then uh, Laura and Chris are going to take you out and uh, they've got some things for you. Hello. Hey Benjamin, how are you? I'm a little Do you want to say hi to everyone? Say hi. Hi. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Oh, do you want to come up here and sit? Yes. <laughs> Can you sit right down here on this step right beside me? There, okay, you do that. So, have you had a good March break? Yeah? How about you, Victor? Good. Good. So tomorrow, it's back to school, right? Yay! Yay! <laughs> Yay. It's, uh, all over the world. Yes. So back to school, and are you excited to see your teachers? Yeah? How about you? Yeah. What do you like about your teachers? What do you like about your teachers? Field trips. They take you on field trips. That is kind of fun, isn't it? Yeah. Do you have anything that you like about your teachers? Yeah. Fun things that they do? Yeah. You know, I have had a lot of teachers in my life. Yeah, well, well. <laughs> yes. 
yes, I have. Um, and one of the things that I always liked about teachers, and I still like about teachers, is that you can ask them questions. That you can, if something is in your mind and you're not quite sure what they're talking about, or you've got something that you think, they didn't quite explain this to me, you can ask them a question. And you know, Jesus was called a teacher. He was called a rabbi and a teacher. And he is someone that we can ask questions of too. <laughs> yeah. A rabbi is a Jewish word for teacher. And so Jesus was a rabbi and a teacher. And we see this morning, we're going to read a story where Peter, he was one of his disciples, wasn't quite sure what Jesus was talking about. And so he asked a question. And he said to Jesus, how many times do I have to forgive someone who hurts me or says something that isn't very nice? What do you think Jesus might say to him? Oh, and Peter thought he was being really generous. And he said, do I have to say forgive them? Seven times? No. What do you think the answer is? Don't know. No, that's okay. Well, you know, Peter thought he was being, like, just really generous saying seven times. But Jesus told him 77 times. <laughs> I know. That's crazy, isn't it? And really, the point is not to count to 77, although we could, but the point is that there's a lot of forgiveness, and that's how Jesus is with us. Jesus forgives us over and over and over wow. again because we continue, even as adults, we do things we shouldn't do, and so we ask Jesus for forgiveness, and we get it. So let's remember that we can ask questions of Jesus anytime, okay? We're going to pray, okay? We're going to pray. Let's, can you? A Bible. A Bible? Yeah. Laura's going to take you out, and you're going to do some, uh, some stuff with her in just a second. Dear Jesus, thank you for being our teacher, for letting us ask questions, and always being patient. Amen. All right. You guys head out with Laura, and we'll see you after church, okay? For some. Prince Gary, would you like to come and lead our scripture reading today. Hello. Our scripture reading is taken from the book of Matthew, 18, 15 to 22 is on page 799 of the Pew Bible. <laughs> if your brother or sister sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If you are listened to, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If that person refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, 
Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, if my brother or sister sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times. Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. This is the word of the Lord. A prayer for understanding. Teaching God, we want to learn the ways of forgiveness. We want to learn the ways of grace. We want to learn your ways of love. As we prepare to listen to your word, calm the noise in our minds. Center our spirits to focus on you so that we might learn and hear what we have missed in this story before. God, we want to learn your ways. Meet us here. Speak your truth. Help us listen. Amen. The psalm is a responsive psalm. How can young people keep their way pure? By guiding it according to your word. Okay. If I treasure your word in my heart so that I may not sin against you, With my lips, I declare all the ordinances of your mouth. I the I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways. Okay, this is the word of the Lord. This is a setting of Psalm 23. The Lord is my guide and friend. I rest well when I'm with him. No hunger or thirst or anger need when my Lord is here with me. His love is my resting place. My shepherd is kind and full of grace. The arms of my are strong and safe his love is my resting place the shadow of death may fall with darkness upon my way but always my is near to me his love is my resting place his love is my resting place 
My shepherd is kind and full of grace. The arms of my Lord are strong and safe. His love is my resting place. Your goodness will be my feast. My or kindness will overflow. And always your love will follow me. His love is my resting place. My shepherd is kind and full of grace. The arms of my Lord are strong and safe. His love is my resting place. His love is my resting place. Thanks, Stuart. Speak to you in the name of the Creator, the Son, and the Spirit. Elton John has this line, sorry seems to be the hardest word. Sometimes sorry is indeed the hardest word to utter, and sometimes it is the hardest word to say with meaning. Mr. Rogers tells the story of being with his grandchildren who were out in the backyard and they had hoses and they were having great fun squirting one another with water. Not wanting to get wet, Mr. Rogers said to his grandchildren, do not get me wet, in his harshest and sternest voice. Can almost predict where this is going to go, can't you? Little by little, his eldest grandson kept testing the limits, getting closer and closer to him with the squirting water. Mr. Rogers then got a sterner voice and said, that's it, you're done, put the hoses away, inside. Grandson looked quite sad. And the more Mr. Rogers thought about this, the sadder he got. Because his grandson actually hadn't squirted him, hadn't gotten him wet. He realized that he had stepped into the place where the brothers were playing and getting along fine he realized that he had come into this situation after a very frustrating day at work. And so later he called his grandson to say how awful he felt about his visit and that the more he thought about it, he realized that he was taking out his anger that followed him from work on him. told him he was very sorry. And the grandson responded saying to him, everyone makes mistakes sometimes. Mr. Rogers said that naturally generous heart of his grandson touched him deeply. 
And if he hadn't have made that call, he would have never known in that moment the gift of his grandson's forgiveness. Mr. Rogers was willing to humble himself and say, I'm sorry. And the other, his grandson, just offered him such wonderful forgiveness. Their relationship could have been damaged. This could have been a story that his grandson told years later and wondered about his grandfather saying, got really angry with me and really cranky. But their relationship strengthened because of it. Sometimes things work out this way, but I suspect we can all think of situations where things don't work out as nicely or neatly. Jesus knew this too, and he cared so much about people staying in good relationship with one another so community could be maintained and even strengthened. And so he did something about it. This is probably some of the rationale for why he laid out a bit of a process of what to do when someone sins against you. Now we are used to in our society seeing all kinds of 12 step, six step, three step kind of processes for dealing with pretty much everything under the sun, right? But when we deal with forgiveness, it's not quite so simple. It's laid out in Matthew in three steps, but let's not forget that it's quite complicated to get there, to keep the relationship together. So let's refresh our mind on the three steps. Jesus said, if another believer sins against you, Go privately and point out the offense. If the person listens and confesses, they have been won back. Now, if that doesn't work, you're to take two or one or two others with you and go back and talk to the person again. If the person still doesn't listen, Jesus says to take your case to the church. So it sounds neat and tidy. It's complicated because we're people and we don't work like robots. So let's not oversimplify it. It's something that we see in our church courts talking about a Matthew 18 process and it can be talked about like, oh, it's very simple, just follow the process. It's not that simple. If the person won't see that they've sinned, Jesus says they are to be treated like a pagan or a corrupt tax collector. Now this little line (laughs) gathered a lot of uh, discussion on Monday afternoon at our Bible study because it kind of stumped us a bit. It's been one of these things that I've been pondering all week. What on earth does Jesus mean? So on the one hand, Jesus loved the pagans and the tax collectors, right? He went and spent time with them, and he wanted them to come in, to know him, to see the ways of being, and to be a part of God's vision. However, what this is saying, I think, is that if the fellow believer who has sinned against can't see the ways they've sinned against you, They are, in essence, taking themselves outside of the community because they aren't following the ways that Jesus is instructing for them to come back into right relationship. So they've kind of taken themselves out. But that doesn't mean that Jesus or us shouldn't care about them, shouldn't love them. That's what Jesus was all about, right? The Christian community is called to defend the interests of everyone. Especially, Matthew will tell us, the least, the vulnerable, those who are outside 
and don't have the power. We're supposed to create conditions for forgiveness and restoration to flourish. And Jesus is in this in a very real way. So if someone takes themselves out, that doesn't mean that we walk away. It means they can still be sitting here. Right? But we help to bring back in, help them to see Jesus' love for them. Now, Peter. Gosh, I love Peter and his questions. So Jesus has said all this, laid it out, what may have seemed like a rather like three-step process, and here we go, everything is back together. And if they don't offer their confession and ask for forgiveness, well, they've removed themselves from the community. But it's not that simple. And so Peter says, you can almost hear him, I am trying to understand this and what it actually means for me as a part of this community. So thinking he was being very generous, he said, how often should I forgive someone who sins against me? Seven times? He thought he was being kind of over the top, you know, seven is a lot, right? When you think about forgiving someone. But seven times doesn't even come close to the generosity of Jesus. Now, depending on the translation of the Bible, and we've been reading two different translations in our Bible studies on Monday morning, this can be translated, Jesus' response can be translated as 77 times or 70 times 7. <laughs> 7 is not even close. It is not a literal thing about counting and when you get to 77 you can write them off. It's not the point. Jesus' point is just about how generous and gracious he is, the bottomlessness to the forgiveness that is offered by God through Jesus. Jesus' math isn't predictable. It's infinite. Forgiveness is abundant. Grace cannot be earned. I don't know about you, but I find it all a little humbling and a little hard to wrap my mind around the vastness of the forgiveness that is offered to us. Especially when we think about the times when we repeat our sins Tell me I'm not alone in this, folks, but we say, ask for forgiveness, I'm going to try better. Hmm, we're back again, right? Jesus doesn't tire of it, though. Of course, he wants us to get better and to try differently so that we can live differently. But the abundance of Jesus' forgiveness is staggering. And when we stand in this place of humbleness and awe, the thing that we can say to Jesus is teach me. Teach me how to forgive. Let's listen to Reverend Sarah Speed's poem that goes with this text, Teach Me. Teach me about the ways of the wind, about the ways of the world, about the ways of the heart. Teach me about the soft crook of my lover's arm and the way two souls can hold each other close. Teach me about forgiveness, about the language of I'm sorry and the softness of sincerity. Teach me about the abundance 
about 70 times 7, and all the days of my life. Teach me about joy, about its contagious weaving and its soul healing. Teach me about mercy, about open hands and deep breaths. Teach me about the dawn of time and the stars in the sky. Teach me what matters most. Teach me what is mine to do. Teach this achingly curious heart until I run out of questions or I run out of days. Teach me some melodious sonnet and I will have a life well lived. Amen. As we come to our time of offering, I want to talk to you a little bit this morning about a line that is in our budget every year, and it's called Presbyterian Sharing. And this is um, our national office and our national church and the things that they do. And we, as Presbyterians, we all help to support the work that they do. One of the things that they do is publish this newspaper several times a year. And in it, it talks about, there's a bit of theology, so love and hate in a time of fear, that's the cover story. This time, it talks about different things that congregations across Canada are doing and the ways that uh, they are being church. And so our donations help to support the publication of this newspaper. Some of you hopefully are getting it delivered to your mailbox at home. Um, there are copies out on the table outside of Karen's office. So if you don't get it at home, I encourage you to pick one up. There's lots of good reading in here every time. And so this is part of what we help to support. And, and it's a gift for us. We've certainly, through seeing some of the ideas that people have done in other congregations, have brought some things back here and vice versa. So um, I commend that to you to read at your leisure. Offerings can be um, left either, there's a plate at the back door there or on your way to coffee this morning outside of Karen's office or online. Many different ways to give to support the ministry and mission that we have been called to in this place. So let's sing our doxology and then we'll pray a prayer of dedication.
God of abundant love and abundant mercy, thank you for the way that you love us and thank you for calling us into community, whether we are able to be here in the sanctuary or we worship online. Thank you for gathering us as your people to serve and to love and to be your people here in this place. We give with the same generosity that you shower upon us. Accept our gifts, bless them, multiply them, surprise us with what they are able to do and how we are able to show our love for others and your love. Use us and our gifts to shine your light into the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to continue singing, Let Us Build a House.
come before the Lord with our prayers. Almighty God, thank you for this community of faith that mirrors your vision and says all are welcome. All are welcome, including those who don't know they need you, those who take themselves out of community, those who feel they aren't good enough. You say all are welcome, and we say all are welcome. Thank you for the ways you welcome us and love us. Help us to offer that same welcome to others. And we thank you for the gift of forgiveness. It's hard for us to really comprehend the generosity you show to us when we can find it so difficult to forgive others. Help us to grow in our capacity to genuinely say, I'm sorry, and to accept the apologies of others. Jesus, we lift to you those that need your love as their resting place. We pray for those who are grieving, and we are especially mindful of those who have more recent losses and find themselves in these tender early stages of grief. We lift up to you the family of Charles Barber as they prepare to celebrate his life this week. Be with his children and grandchildren and all who mourn. And we continue to pray for those who lost family members in the not too distant past. Be with the Garbett family, the family of Fern Rutherford, and the Phillips family. Lord, in your mercy, help them to know that when the loneliness and heartache of grief feels overwhelming, that they can find rest and comfort with you, for you are with them in every moment. We ask that you be with all who are facing challenges, whether they be challenges related to physical, spiritual, or emotional health, relationship challenges, struggles with work or aging. Lord, in your mercy, help them to feel your presence. Help them to feel your love. Help us to know how to be there for people who are struggling, for those who are grieving new or recent losses, those who are grieving losses that happened time ago. Lord, our world and the people who inhabit it are in such need of your restoring goodness. We lift up to you places like Haiti, Ukraine, and the Middle East where conflict dominates their days and nights. We lift up to you places like South Sudan and other African countries and the Middle East where people do not have enough to eat. And we lift up to you places where people are not given adequate opportunities for education. And we pray for women and girls in Afghanistan who are not allowed to go to school. Lord, we pray for people whose home country is not a safe place for them, and so they have traveled to Canada and other places looking for safety and a new life. Be with all who are seeking refugee status in Canada, and we offer special prayers for those who have found a spiritual home here at Clarkson while they wait. We lift these prayers and the quiet prayers of our hearts to you, and we join our voices together and pray in the way that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, 
forever and ever. Amen. Our going out hymn is number 211, Take Up Your Cross. As you go from this time of worship, be assured of the abundant, abundant, unending love of God through Jesus. And also remember the generous forgiveness that is also offered. We are known to be human. We are known to falter. And God offers us forgiveness upon forgiveness. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the friendship and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each one of us and those that we love and pray for on this day and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>